Discerning Hearts provides content dedicated to those on the spiritual journey. To continue production of these videos, prayers, and more, go to discerninghearts.com and click the donate link found there or inside the free Discerning Hearts app to make your donation. Thanks and God bless. Discerning Hearts, in cooperation with the Poor Clare Nuns of the Monastery of Our Lady of Guadalupe and Cluny Media, presents excerpts from Come, Lord Jesus, Meditations on the Art of Waiting, written by Mother Mary Frances. In this episode, Mother Mary Frances reflects on faith, hope, and love. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, As for you, your sins are forgiven. Luke chapter 5, verse 20. My dear sisters, today in the gospel, our Lord praises the faith of those who lowered the paralytic through the roof so that Jesus could heal him. Let us continue to reflect on the theme we had in the Sunday readings of giving evidence that we wish to reform our lives. And let us examine the evidence of our own willingness to be healed, which pertains to faith, hope, and charity. To reform literally means not to make a new form, but to go back to the original form. The Cistercian abbot Dom Gabriel Sorteas said, Our Lady was exactly as God dreamed her. She never had to be reshaped. The form never had to be reintegrated. Unfortunately, we often need to be reshaped and reformed. Yet that too is beautiful, that we are formed again, not in a different way, but back to that dream, a lovely expression that God has of each one of us, that dream form in the mind and the heart of God of what he intends each of us to be. This is what we mean by reform. Faith, we are told in Scripture, is the substance of things unseen. It is easy to say, I believe in God, but to say that I I believe that God is in control it can be very hard to really give him the evidence of the heart, of the soul bowed down before him, sometimes in confusion at what he seems to be doing and not doing, and sometimes in real anguish, and to believe. This is the evidence he is asking of us. We tend to think of faith as a lovely thing, Faith is not just a matter of speaking, but it is a matter of believing when it is difficult to believe. Our Lady at the Annunciation had to ask for some light on the subject, How shall this be? She did not doubt, but she didn't really know just how to believe this. And so she asked. In puzzlement, in bewilderment, and perhaps most of all, in anguish, when it seems like things are not going right, when it seems almost like God has lost control, this is the hour of faith. Not perhaps when the head is lifted and smiling, but when the head is bent in bewilderment, in anguish. God asks us now in Advent to give evidence of our reform, of our being formed again into the essence, the radicality of I believe, not because I see, but because I don't see. Then there's the evidence of hope that we can give him. St. Claude de la Colombière, the apostle of hope, said, I hope, and I will always hope, and I will never cease hoping when it is clear that there is no longer any reason to hope, then I will hope all the more. That caught my heart, my mind, when I was very young. But in his determination to give all his anxieties over to God, even he had to discover, as we do, that this is very hard to accomplish. We do not really want to let go of them, they are debilitating, they are degenerative of our forward action, and yet it can be very hard to let go of our anxieties. We ask, but how is it going to turn out? 
It is getting more confused all the time. The skeins are more tangled all the time. Hope is such a strong thing because it is hope in the face of almost everything not presenting human reason for hope. Where shall God ask for evidence of this hope if not among his contemplatives? Dom Gabriel, speaking about faith and hope and love and prayer, said that when a contemplative is crushed with anxieties and still hopes, this man is praying. How I love that. It can seem sometimes that one can hardly formulate a prayer, but one hopes on. This man, he said, this monk is praying. Then, the evidence of love. Realizing more and more that love is perhaps less lyric than dogged. Love, true love, will not give up. Love goes on loving and loving. In the end, if it is really lyric, it is only because it has been persistently dogged. It will not give out. Faith, hope, and love, of course, are closely intertwined. The liturgy says, He will appear, and adds, At last. This is connected very precisely to what we have just been saying. We are all like the watchmen on the tower, the sentinel watching and waiting. Scripture doesn't say that Jesus will appear at any minute, but that at last he will appear, and that we can count on this because he is true to his word. We ask ourselves, when perhaps many things seem to be tangled and increasing in this state all the time, do we believe that he will appear at last? Do we believe it, not because of what we see, but just because he is true to his word? In one of the antiphons at Vespers, we heard the familiar words, Have courage, all of you, lost and fearful. We want to linger on these wonderful words. Sometimes we can feel as though we are the only ones who ever got this lost, the only ones who have ever had so many fears pressing in upon us. But these words were written quite a while ago. Have courage, all of you, lost and fearful. We are lost every time that we allow our faith, our hope, and our love to weaken then, of course, we are fearful. The Antiphon goes on to say, Take heart and say, Our God will come to save us. He will come to save us in the great act of redemption, yes, but also in the situations that seem too much for us. We had in yesterday's oration, Remove the things that hinder us from receiving Christ with joy. What are the things within me? That hinder me from receiving Christ with joy? Do they not have a common denominator? That there is some lack of faith, some wavering of hope, some weakness in love? Where is my faith weak? Where are the loose threads in my hope? Where is the weakness in my love? I ask you to take these few simple words and knead them into your thoughts, to take them into your own prayer. We want to be determined with God's grace, which will not be lacking, which is super abundant in this season, to give him evidence of our allowing him to reform us to his original thought of us, his original dream of us, so that we really are women of faith, which is a suffering thing of hope, which is a demanding thing, and love, which is a dogged thing, so that it can become lyric. You've been listening to an excerpt from Come, Lord Jesus, Meditations on the Art of Waiting. For more episodes in this series, visit discerninghearts.com, or you can find it inside the free Discerning Hearts app. To obtain a copy of the book, Come, Lord Jesus, visit cluneymedia.com. 
Discerning Hearts is a 501c3 nonprofit Catholic apostolate dedicated to evangelization and spiritual formation. To learn how you can support our mission, visit discerninghearts.com.